How do you define cheating in a relationship? Would you forgive your significant other if you caught him or her cheating on you? Hello everyone, let's investigate here. Today, we will be talking about a gruesome case where it is not just a simple murder case. A woman assisted her husband to kill her lover and to later kill her husband for revenge. Yeah, it sounded pretty horrifying, right? So who is this crazy cold-blooded woman? Let's go ahead and start today's story. Christopher Reagan moved to Michigan because he wanted to be closer to his girlfriend, Terry O'Donnell, whom he met on a dating site. Terry is a teacher for the local school district, and she was definitely excited for Christopher's move. But Terry quickly found out that Christopher started to distance himself from her. She didn't know the reason, but her instinct told her that Christopher had found someone else. Terry decided to break up with him, but he didn't want to. He sent over several text messages to Terry telling her that he wishes to spend every holiday and the rest of his life with her. Terry was moved, and she decided to give him a second chance, and asked him out for a date to rekindle their love. But sadly, these text messages will be the last time that Terry will ever hear from Christopher. In October 2014, the Air Force veteran Christopher Reagan vanished without a trace. Terry felt strange, as he didn't show up during the date. She went over to his house and realized that there was no one at home. She tried to call his phone, but no one answered, and then the phone was turned off after a few days. After 10 days of not being able to get a hold of Christopher, Terry felt something was wrong and decided to report to the police about her missing boyfriend. The police entered Christopher's apartment to find that the apartment was in a complete mess. It looked like someone broke into the apartment. Now, the police started to take this case seriously as they had a gut feeling that Christopher was in danger. Terry confirmed that Christopher is not a messy person so his apartment was definitely broken into by someone else. A day later, the police found an abandoned car not too far away from his apartment, and it was later confirmed to be Christopher's car. There were no obvious signs of fighting and stranglings, but the police did find the sticky notes with an address on the floor of the passenger seat. The address led the police to a house owned by Kelly Cochran and Jason Cochran. The police soon figured out that Kelly was the woman that Christopher had been seeing besides Terry. Christopher cheated on Terry with Kelly, but Kelly seems to be more open about this relationship. She'd often invited Christopher over to her house for dinner, and Jason knows about it too. The police brought the Cochrans back to the station for a talk. Kelly and Jason are from Indiana. They were high school sweethearts and got married right after high school. They had a pool cleaning business, but after 10 years, they didn't save up much money. Jason even had a permanent injury on his low back from cleaning the pool. He couldn't work anymore and had to rely on painkillers to ease his low back pain. Kelly became the main source of income for this household. Jason has to rely on Kelly and at the same time, he could not perform in bed. Therefore, he agreed to an open relationship. Kelly admitted that she had been seeing Christopher, but she was not able to get a hold of him for a while now. She thought he wanted to end this relationship, so he ghosted her. She also confirmed with the police that her and her husband are in an open relationship, so they can date and see whoever they want. Kelly seemed calm and composed when she was describing her relationship with Christopher and how Jason knows about it and is totally fine with it. But when the police asked Jason about this, his reaction was a little bit different. Jason was obviously uncomfortable with how his wife is seeing another man, and he could not do anything about it. The police can feel his anger during their conversation. They felt something is off about Jason, but after seeing his health condition, the man is crippled and can barely walk. They doubt that he can do anything to Christopher, who was an Air Force veteran. After obtaining a search warrant, the police went to Cochrane's house and tried to find any valuable information that could help them solve the case. The police did discover a bunch of weapons, but they are legally owned by the Cochrane's. 
they also found a notebook where Jason vented about his life and how he often had the urge to shoot people with his guns. This definitely caught the police's attention. Jason explained that he wrote this when he was in extreme pain. He didn't have the intent to hurt anyone. Other than the notebook, the police also obtained some valuable information for Cochrane's neighbors. They stated that they heard a gunshot from Cochrane's house on the night of October 14th, which is the date where Christopher went missing. And at midnight, they can hear the sound of them using a chainsaw to break down something. I think by now, we all have our guesses on what exactly happened to Christopher. The police remained hopeful and did not want to jump to conclusion because the neighbor only described the sound they heard and they never really saw anything. If Christopher was murdered, where is the body? The police did not find any trace of blood in Cochrane's house so they could not press any charges on them. The Cochrane's can feel that they are the top suspects for this case, so they quickly packed their belongings and moved back to Indiana. After that, the police did not find any new information. Therefore, the progress of this case was delayed. On February 20th, 2016, the Indiana police received a call from a woman saying that she found her husband unconscious after she came back from work. The paramedic and the police arrived at the house shortly after, but unfortunately, the man was dead. The woman who phoned the police earlier was Kelly Cochran. Yes, and the deceased man was Jason Cochran. Kelly explained to the police that Jason might have overdosed because of his immense back pain. The police believed her as she was crying in pain and was devastated by her husband's death. But when the autopsy report came out, the police knew they were played by Kelly. They found five different illegal medications in Jesse's system, and the cause of death was suffocation, not overdose. The police quickly went to Kelly's place and tried to bring her in for another talk, but she was already on the run. She was nowhere to be found. Kelly became the top suspect for this case. While she was on the run, she would still reply to the police through text messages. The police suggested she turn herself in, but she tries to make herself innocent. She even tried to dupe the police by faking her escape route. She made it seem like she was going to the west coast, but it was 2016. She was too naive to think that the police would actually believe her. They simply tracked her down when locating her phone. The police arrested Kelly in Wingo, Kentucky. After running her name in the record, the police found out another cold case that was linked to Kelly, which is the disappearance of Christopher Reagan back in 2014. What is Kelly's secret? Did she murder her lover two years ago, and now her husband? It did not take long for Kelly to tell the police everything. She confirmed that Christopher was murdered by Jason, and she covered up the crime for him. Over the years, she became more and more furious and resentful at her husband for the death of her lover. And finally, she drugged him and used a pillow to suffocate him to death. Kelly stated that back in 2002, she and Jason promised each other that if one of them would cheat in this relationship, they would do anything to get rid of the lover. Kelly met Christopher during work and quickly fell in love with him. After Jason found out about Chris, he reminded Kelly that the promise they made to each other when they got married. Kelly had no choice but to help Jason to murder her lover. On October 14, 2014, Kelly called Christopher and asked him to come over to her house to hang out, as her husband will not be home for the night. Of course, Christopher headed over right away, but he didn't know it was a death trap. When Christopher arrived, Kelly seduced him and told him that she wants him right now. Oh boy, Chris, didn't you just tell Terry that you wanted to spend the rest of your life with her during the day? And not even after 24 hours, he went over to your lover's place again. Christopher was so excited that he didn't even notice Jason was pointing the gun to him in the corner. Jason then shot him in the head while he was having sex with Kelly. After dismantling the body, the Cochrans drove and disposed of it in the wood. They also cleaned Chris's car before abandoning on the road. After moving back to Indiana, Kelly could not forget about Chris 
as she was deeply in love with him. She hated Jason and regret on helping him to murder Chris. Therefore, she drugged him and killed him. Now that Kelly confessed everything, the police asked her for the location where they disposed of the body. But the police were only able to find the skull, but nothing else, not even part of the bones or anything. The police then learned something horrifying from Kelly's neighbor back in Michigan. After the disappearance of Christopher, before the police started their search, the Cochran hosted a party in their backyard and invited all their neighbors. The neighbor recalled that it was a little odd because the Cochrans never interact with them. But all of a the sudden, they invited everyone over for a party. After arriving at the backyard, they realized that it was a barbecue party. There was plenty of meat for everyone to feast on. The neighbors were surprised by Cochrane's generosity, and they recalled that the meat tasted really strange. They couldn't tell if it was beef or pork or lamb. Well, now we know what kind of meat that the Cochrane's were serving to their neighbors. This is extremely sick. In early 2017, Kelly went on a trial for taking part in killing of Chris Reagan and was found guilty on five counts, including first degree murder, and was sentenced to life in prison. Rather than go through a second trial for murdering her husband, she pleaded guilty in April 2018 and was sentenced to an additional 65 years in prison. While in custody, Kelly began making claims that she and her husband might have committed other murders. In court filings, Iron County Prosecuting Attorney Melissa Powell said Cochran claimed responsibility for the deaths of other individuals, which, if true, make them serial killers. If they were really serial killers, I can't even imagine how many barbecue parties they hosted so they can get rid of the bodies. During an interview, Kelly's brother said that his entire family was scared of the Cochrans because they were often joking around for murdering people, but also with a dead serious face. One time, he heard Jason shout it at Kelly that he will end her lover's life. Kelly even told him that she murdered at least nine people. Maybe we will never know if Jason and Kelly were serial killers, but we know for sure that Kelly will be behind bars for the rest of her life. And Jason got what he deserved.